Hello, my name is Jeff Stout and I'm a professor at the University of Central Florida in Orlando, Florida. I have a fun story to share with you today that was shared with me by one of the pioneers of creatine research. This is a story of serendipity, a curious horse named Sammy, and the birth of creatine supplementation research. During the COVID-19 lockdown, I reached out to my dear friend, Professor Roger Harris, asking him to tell me stories about his early days of research. I found myself waiting for his emails like a kid in a candy store could hardly wait. One day he shared a story about how Sammy, a horse, played an unexpected role in the world of sports nutrition. Back in the swinging 60s, two young MDs, Jonas Bergstrom and Eric Holtman, teamed up in Stockholm to create one of the most influential physiology labs in the world. In fact, in 1966, they broke new ground demonstrating the link, link between muscle glycogen content and exercise capacity. Fast forward to 1967, when our protagonist, Roger Harris, joined the lab as a postdoc to study ATP and phosphorylcreatine metabolism. This research laid the foundation for creatine supplementation. However, an unpublished study in 1975 from this lab cast doubt on its effectiveness, thus putting creatine research on hold for almost 20 years. In 1983, Roger found himself at the Animal Health Trust in the UK, where he continued his muscle biopsy research on horses, camels, and dogs. Interestingly, he received 50 grams of creatine monohydrate when he actually requested carnosine. But what to do with the unexpected creatine? Enter the, the horse Sammy. On an October chilly morning, Roger attempted to dissolve 10 grams of creatine in a 50 milliliter syringe in order to orally administer it to Sammy. But the syringe seized up and Sammy was spared. Unfazed, Roger decided to be his own guinea pig, dissolving five grams of creatine in warm water and drinking it himself. To his surprise, a significant rise in blood creatine levels was observed. Now Roger was super excited and he could not wait. So using the very latest in technology, he faxed Dr. Hallman and returned to Stockholm immediately to commence another human study. The result, the groundbreaking 1992 paper on creatine supplementation. As it turns out, had Sammy received creatine, the results would have been unremarkable as horses can absorb creatine from the gut. This would have only reinforced the 1975 study's findings and creatine might never have gained the popularity it enjoys. Today. And so we owe a debt of gratitude to Sammy the horse and the serendipitous events that led to birth of creatine supplementation research. A marvelous reminder that sometimes the most unexpected stories can have the most profound impacts on our lives. Thank you.